The Amiga Spyrite system. Does it make Amiga better than Rolex? Let's talk about it. But first, I, I know, I know, I know, we are really, really late to this news. It was first unveiled back in like January or February, but it completely passed me by. And I had the pleasure of attending an Omega Immersion Day at the Royal Academy of Art in Mayfair in London a couple days ago. I learned about it, thought it was bloody amazing. I even said, sat there in the lecture hall, with all sorts of people. I said to the person next to me, like, have they just beaten Rolex? That was literally one of my first thoughts. So maybe it's a bit clickbaity, but like, it was one of my first thoughts. So sue me, sue me. But first of all, I wanna say, I'm just a nerd, I'm not an expert. So you, you wanna come at me, start a discussion in the comments. I'm happy to talk to you. Just just don't, just don't be mean. I'm, on, I'm only small and gentle. Like six foot. I'm five foot eleven, and when I say I'm five foot eleven, that's that's genuine. I'm not one of the people that lie about their height. Uh, Terry, Terry's small, but he's also dangerous. So so don't don't mess with him. <laughs> Today I have a smaller quantity of dirty water, non-carbonated, apple flavored. Yum, 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 yum. So Amiga unveiled their new Spyrate system in their new Speedmaster Super Racing. It's not the watch so much that's important, it's the new thing that's part of it. What new thing? Well, essentially, all it is, in practical terms, is an addition to the hairspring. Now, the hairspring is the thing that oscillates in the watch. It goes mew, 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 and does that to affect the balance wheel, which oscillates at a consistent rate. But the speed at which the hairspring oscillates affects accuracy. There's a couple ways to affect the speed. One of the ways, change the length of the hair, hairspring. The other way, which Amiga's done for quite a while, is there's four screws around the cage of the, air, of the hairspring. Two of the screws, was set at the factory, at a certain length from the inside. The other two were set, can be set later on to affect accuracy. The reason for that is pulling the weight of these screws inwards or outwards changes the rate at which the hairspring oscillates. Imagine a figure skater, they're on ice and they're spinning. They pull all of their weight inwards, make themselves small, because it makes them spin faster. Same sort of principle. The issue with the current system is you have to take out the movement. You have to take out the hairspring enclosure to adjust these screws. Not ideal, is it, Tez? It's not ideal at all. Not ideal. And with that system, Omega can reach master chronometer level, which is plus five seconds a day accuracy. That's pretty amazing. So those weights, on the enclosure, they're called index pins. The use of those pins that move the weight in and out is called making a movement free sprung. That is the same as Rolex's microstellar system and Patek's gyro max system, yes. And the other way of traditionally regulating a movement is essentially you tighten a thing and it affects the amount or the length of usable length on the hairspring, okay? So you essentially feed some of it out, feed some of it in, and it affects the rate at which the hairspring oscillates, okay? And I explained the other way, you move the weight inwards, you move the weight outwards. Those are the two traditional ways. Very cool. Both really, really innovative ways. But what on earth does this have to do with Omega? Good question. Amiga introduced their silicon hairspring in 2008, and many other manufacturers have transitioned to silicon hairsprings in the meantime, mostly because it's really anti-magnetic. Um, it's, it's not affected by magnetism. So I think most Omega watches are now like 15,000 Gauss or something, uh, at least a lot of them are which is really cool. That's a lot of that's a lot of magnetism you can put your affect your watch with and it not 
die. And it's been using free sprung hairsprings for a long time now. But there's an issue with a free sprung hairspring. And the biggest problem is that when you're changing the weight, you have to be hyper precise, really, really precise. Because otherwise, the differences can be pretty big. And even if you're off by a fraction of a millimeter, it's gonna impact the, re the rate of oscillation massively because like, you can have a heavier weight on one side, you can have an heavier... You get me. Did you understand that English, Terry? I got you. That flawless English. That brings us on nicely, I think, to the Omega Spirate system. It's got a flexible blade attached to the hairspring that can be easily adjusted to affect the stiffness of the hairspring. So it's about, it's not about adjusting the length or about adjusting the weight going inwards or outwards, although it has that system as well. So it's double dipping on accuracy. It's got, it's got, the, it's free sprung with a, with a spirate, which adjusts the stiffness of the hairspring. And that's where things get spicy. <laughs> So, Spirate system takes Omega's standard silicon hairspring, just their normal one, and it adds sort of a long tail that atta attaches to the balance bridge. And then that attachment on the balance bridge allows you, when, when you take off the case back, just using any tool that fits in this little hole to adjust it easily. Without taking the movement part, you can adjust it with a screwdriver or with, with the appropriate attachment. How cool is that? Extremely cool. That is extremely cool. The key to understanding spirate, though, is in understanding how this flex this flexible blade functions. Tension can be added to the hairspring or removed from this blade, which is connected to the hairspring and thus acts to adjust the overall stiffness. Stiffness. The stiffness. Stiff. So you get it. Uh, I'm not going to go into like a massive technicalities. It allows Omega to adjust the stiffness of the hairspring and they're using a free sprung hairspring so they can draw the weight inwards or outwards. Now, here's the important part. This will take a master chronometer certified coaxial movement from a minus zero plus five second a day accuracy to an accuracy of minus zero plus two seconds a day rated. Now, Omega have also said to me in this Royal Academy of Arts talk thingy, they're seeing real world accuracy of this movement of 0.7 to 0.8 seconds a day. For context, and the reason for the title of this video is Rolex with their superlative chronometer standard that's touted across the whole industry as some of the best fully mechanical watchmaking out there, Rolex's standard is minus two plus two seconds a day. So Omega have owned Rolex at their own game. Now, of course, there's differences. For now, this is just in one Omega watch. It's not even publicly available yet. But their intention is to roll it out across their entire coaxial line for it to be in every single coaxial automatic watch, which is mental. <laughs> What's more, is the intention, as you can just adjust it with a screw, is every Omega boutique will have a technician, someone trained to adjust these watches. They'll whack off the case back, get the tool, and adjust the accuracy of your watch in the boutique, in, in the Omega authorized dealer. That's not something Rolex has either. That's mental. I mean, at a real world accuracy of 0.7 to 0.8 seconds a day, they're approaching Grand Seiko levels of quoted accuracy. Most people see no deviation from Grand Seiko, but they're quoted at one se plus one second a day, minus zero seconds a day accuracy. And that uses a quartz regulator. Omega, if you actually start producing and putting the Spirate system in all of your watches, wow, um, I might be really expensive. They might not be able to compete with Rolex on price, but that's all, to, all That's all to come. That's all to see, that's all to play for. I don't even know the quoted price of this, of this watch. Price we're quoting for this really, really cool looking thingy, the Speedmaster Super Racing that this system has been introduced on. Now, Terry, what do you think of this amazing Omega? Is it a game changer? 
think it might be a game changer actually. It's a game changer in the world of mechanical and automatic watches. Just as actually Coaxial was, designed by George Daniels in 1999. I'm sure Rolex and Zenith are already looking at ways to replicate this, but until they do, Amiga's won. Ami Amiga's ahead. And that's, that's just all there is to say about it. They've halved Rolex's deviation. Yeah, <laughs> which is just amazing. What do you guys have to say about this? I was, I was floored when I was sat in the theater. I find it really exciting. If you like it and find it cool, and or if you don't, pop a comment down below. And don't forget guys, like and subscribe. 500 by Christmas is the goal. Can we do it, Terry? Absolutely. Absolutely, my guys. Thank you so much for all the support. Just in the last 28 days, we've had over 15,000 views and gained 140 subscribers. That is insane. And we are so far ahead of wherever we thought we were gonna be. Pop a comment down below, giving love to Terry because without him, this channel would not exist. So give us, a, give us a comment, giving all the love to Terry. And don't forget everybody to watch yourselves. Yeah.